everyone, I am back again. Let's talk about some chest tubes. I got a video request to go over the chest tube system, which makes a lot of sense because no matter where you work at, uh, medical surgical, ICU, uh, pediatrics, geriatrics, somebody is going to come in there with the chest tube. So let's talk about what you need to know for NCLEX. Okay, first of all, chest tubes are placed to remove air and or fluid from the pleural cavity. The chest tube works really great to do this because it creates a vacuum that sucks out that air or fluid. Now, air in the pleural space is called a what? It is called a pneumothorax, while blood in the pleural space is called a hemothorax. So let's just get some terms under control here. No matter what kind of chest tube you have or whatever company made it, chest tubes are based on the three bottle system, which means that every chest tube has three chambers. So let's talk about what we need to know for NCLEX regarding those chambers. The first chamber is called the collection chamber. The collection chamber main purpose is to what? To collect drainage, yes, that's right. Now, what do we need to know for NCLEX? That drainage should be a serosanguous color. What color is serosanguous? Do you guys know? If you don't know, look it up, okay? Um, you're, you're assessing that drainage every four hours, okay? Making sure you're counting out how much is coming out of there. That drainage should never be bright red. If you have bright red drainage in your chest tube, what could that indicate? That could indicate hemorrhaging, yes. So you wanna note that it should not be bright red and it should not be greater than 100 milliliters per hour. That also would indicate hemorrhaging. The next, the next chamber that you have to know about is the water seal chamber. The water seal chamber has water in it. Yeah, about two centimeters of water. And what it does is it creates a one-way valve that allows air to go out, but nothing to come in. NCLEX likes to ask, should you see bubbling, should you not see bubbling in the water so chamber? It's super easy to remember. No, you should not see it. Continuous bubbling is a bad sign. If you look at the water so chamber and it looks like a jacuzzi, okay, no, that means that your patient, there's an air leak somewhere. It's not good. What you should see is gentle titling with inhaling, okay, and exhaling. That's what you should see. The suction control chamber. Basically, this is the area that is applying suction to your patient, just like it says. There's also water in the suction control chamber as well. So when you look at it, NCLEX will ask you, should you see bubbling? Should you not see bubbling there? You should see bubbling in the suction control chamber because that's letting you know that the suction is working, it's functional. If you don't see suction, if you don't see bubbling there, then you have a problem, okay? Now, remember guys, chest tubes should always be below the chest level, okay? To facilitate that drainage, we should not have chest tubes up on the bed. We should not have them hanging from an IV pole. We always want to encourage our clients with chest tubes to cough and deep breathe. And we need to reposition them every hour. Okay, That's going to also help facilitate drainage. Never do these things if your patient has a chest tube. Okay, You never want to milk the chest tube. And milk the chest tube basically means taking your fingers and stripping the chest tube, trying to get the drainage down into the chest tube. I see nurses doing it all the time, trying to get an accurate count, but that could create a pneumothorax in your patient, okay? If your client pulls their chest tube out, what should you do? You need to cover that, you need to cover that hole. You need to cover the incision site. So you do it with a gloved hand first, and then you put a uh, occlusive dressing on the patient's area. Never try to put that chest tube back in, okay? If you didn't put it in the first time, this is my rule, if you didn't put it in the first time, don't put it in the second time, all right? Don't try to put it in. 
So that was a quick rundown of chest tubes. I hope it helps somebody out there. Remember, you guys can do this. You are so capable of passing NCLEX. Many, many people have done it before. Stick to knowing the content, all right? And the content at first may seem overwhelming, but if you break it down into small parts, it's easier to digest that way. Um, so those are my notes. So glad you studied with Read My Review. Bye-bye.